Hey everybody, welcome to our week two of our Optionetics Trading Essentials webinar series. Uh, this is our summer series. We're holding it uh, through the next few weeks here. Glad to have all of you here as more people are piling into the room. So uh, before I begin, let's go over a couple of the rules. I got lots I wanna cover with you over the next hour. Uh, so let's start with this. Session is being recorded. Once the recording's done, I will get it out to you as soon as possible. Also, uh, if you have questions, you can, you're can you welcome to submit them in the Q&A box. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, there's no way I'm going to be able to get to all of them. Two reasons. Number one, a lot of people are in this room tonight. And number two, I gave Jay a vacation. He hasn't taken a vacation in years. And so I finally convinced him to take his family away for a while and stop looking at the screen. And he agreed. So he is on an Alaskan cruise right now. And I know there's part, the part of that cruise he's not gonna be able to get online. So anyway, um, uh, I am uh, the front of the room, the back of the room and everywhere around for tonight with you guys. So uh, again, I will try to answer as many questions as I can here. Uh, most popular ones I will grab. And finally, Finally, um, the disclaimer you see on the screen here. So we put this up at every one of our events. And the only points that I want to make uh, you aware of right now is that uh, two, there's two pieces of this. Uh, number one, stock and options trading has large potential rewards, but also large potential risk. The other thing I want to mention is that myself, uh, anyone with me, uh, whether through Optionetics or uh, consultants, contractors, et cetera, we're here as your educators. We're here to teach you what it is that we do, all right? Um, we're not personal investment advisors. And because of that, we cannot give specific investment advice. Everything I'm gonna talk about tonight is in US dollars unless noted otherwise. And uh, that's pretty much it that I wanna cover with you. You can read this in its entirety on the recording. All you gotta do is just push pause and you can read this word for word. All right. And again, guys, thank you all for being here. Um, hey, uh, you know what? Uh, before I begin, as uh, we're seeing some more folks come into the room. Um, so I took the family on a long weekend last week out to Boulder, Colorado. And what a fun time there was. In fact, I told my wife, I said, i um, uh, going to take you out, get some nice mountain air. Uh, you know, we're, we live in Florida, so it's a lot cooler out there. In fact, it was in the 40s. Um, one morning when I woke up, but um, great time we had, did some hiking. Of course, of course, you guys know that I had to go out there and do some business, all right? Um, and so um, I'll let you know that we own a an interest in a gold mine out there, and so things are progressing along very, very nicely. This is a, a pretty cool situation because not only does it involve, uh, you know, normal uh, corporate shares and all, but it also involves cryptocurrency. They did something that I don't believe anybody else had done is created a cryptocurrency that was ba that was backed by a gold mine, uh, one of the first to do what's called a secure cryptocurrency. And the reason I'm even bringing it up right now is because join me next week uh, because I'm going to be giving away 200 probably about $200,000 in cryptocurrency, all right, in this gold mine. And so I'm pulling it out of my pocket. Come back next week, tell you how. All right, so uh, we are, uh, we had a really good week this week, guys. Uh, you know, I want to start, we'll start with CB, CPB. I mean, Campbell Soup, uh, you know, let's back up a little bit. I want to I do a review of last week. I want to talk about spreads. I want to uh, really dial into Amazon and a couple others. And we, we really uh, hit, the, hit the nail on the head this week. And, um, and I think June is really kind of just the beginning. I am a little concerned about not the 19th because that's Fed Day. And we also got, you know, some other global stuff wrapped up around that week too. But if we can get past June 19th, I think we're going to be sailing into the last week of June and into July as well. Uh, some of the most bullish seasonality uh, over the last 10 years that you'll see all year is between uh, that mid-June to, to mid-July. All right. I'll leave it at that. We'll get through it here in just a few minutes. So um, 
CPB. So we talked about this one last week, and I took I I put the word out before we even discussed this uh, uh, three or four days before last week, and said we've got a buy signal using the darknet channel strategy, and of course this is what it looked like when we sent it out, and of course it's gone even higher since. All right, um, if you take a look at uh, CPB now, last week. I showed you this, and we were up about what 60 or 80 percent of those call options. Well, they hit three over 300 percent last week. And if you know the the rules that we teach, is get at least get out of half of your trade when it doubles in value, and then you can hold the rest and you know let the chips fall where they may. In this case, really nice move on Campbell Soup, and it was one of those ones where uh, it had trended down quite a bit. It was out of favor. It's not a tech stock. Nobody wants it, and because nobody wanted it, and nobody was really, uh, you know, in this thing. It really had a low probability of continuing to head lower. So uh, obviously, the only place it could go was up. Earnings came out and surprised everybody, and then voila! But it really wasn't that expensive before earnings because nobody was talking about it. So uh, I gave out some darknet signals last week. All right, we talked about calls, we talked about puts, we talked about the right to buy and the right to sell, and I ended up talking about darknet signals. And what are darknet signals? Darkness or what we call channel signals. And these were signals that were looking for long, short, and intermediate term channels. And I talked about the fact that we saw a lot of darknet buys last week, even in the indices, Dow Jones, um, S&P, NASDAQ, that these were all tripping buy and rebuy signals. That there were signals in the financials, there were signals in tech that have gone down, and then there were signals in things like HYG. So I pulled HYG up. There were actually three specific signals that we dove into last week and talked about call options, and we talked about uh, one of them was a little too expensive, and I was going to share the strategy with you today to get that number down. So let's go ahead and talk about the uh, the first two, HYG was the iShares iBox high yield corporate bond. And you can see here, last week, there was that buy signal, we discussed this. So this was at about 85 and a half, all right? We didn't get it down here. The buy signal, you know, we, we work from what happens after that buy signal comes. And so we're sitting around that 85 and a half. Okay, move forward. Let me show you what those call options we discussed. We discussed call options at around that uh, two, dollar and 13 cent area that's where it was and i think said i said something like 220 or better if you're looking to try to you know when you get filled on anything you you almost can't go down the middle unless the market goes against you you got to give them a little bit of something and so from here you're talking about not a big move i mean 76 dollar gain that's a 35 percent return on something that's two dollars and 13 cents not bad for bonds not bad for high yield bonds all right, the other trade we discussed was Anadarko Petroleum. I'm sure you all remember that. That was APC. And I talked about the fact that if APC, could, you know, it was, it was trading around the uh, 70, 71 area. And if it could just get up, back up to around the 74, 75 area, this was going to have a nice return. Well, it didn't happen. Look what ended up happening. It went from about 70 and a half to 70 uh, to 70 and has been hanging out around 70 ever since. What does that do to a call option when you buy it? If it does, if the stock goes nowhere, the call deteriorates. It didn't deteriorate that much, down $40. So we're talking about based on the, the $1.90 uh, area, uh, we're looking at about a 21% uh, drop in price, All right? So, hey, as one thing I could tell you is that there's no guarantee, and even something that has 100% uh, in the in the past, it can't uh, be guaranteed that it's going to have that going forward. All right, so that's important to know too. Finally, finally, let me flip this chart on for you. So that is the S&P 500, and the S&P 500 we were discussing way down here. There's your buy signal that we were seeing some turnarounds right off the, this long, short, and intermediate term channel. This was also dark net. So important to just kind of bring that up as well. And as you look at this, you can see the markets actually had really nice moves. And so it really did kind of help 
uh, out with uh, what it was we were looking at there. And so moving forward, what was the problem with the SPY? Does anybody remember? Well, if you don't, let me catch you up to it. Remember, I talked about the options being above 500. They were they were five. In this case, last week, they were five dollars and 54 cents for the 278 calls. All right. Remember that conversation we had last week for those that were with me last week. Maybe you remember that conversation. Um, again, we, uh, we we saw in this case, hey, five dollars and 54 cents became 11.46 by 11.62. That was 108 percent return. All right. So, um, you know, uh, I'm going to show you, uh, you there's a couple of things we could have done. We could have went out of the money. Problem with going out of the money is that you, you know, you, you, you stand a chance of it not moving anywhere and it could see a, a, an even, you know, a sort of a drop because it's a low probability uh, type of option. I like going into money myself. But what we can do is we can work around this. And I want to show you the workaround that we're going to talk about tonight. And so the workaround actually involves spreads, all right? Involves spreads, and that's what I want to discuss with you tonight, trading spreads. So we're going to have a short discussion on trading spreads. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get to work. And we're going to find – I'm going to show you some stuff uh, with that we discussed last week and applying spreads to it. We're going to talk about Amazon because Amazon has a really nice pattern coming up. And uh, maybe we'll look at a few others, too, that are on the uh, docket for um, for seasonal patterns coming into June and July. So uh, what are spreads and why do we trade them? All right. Well, um, the spreads that we look at uh, bullish wise are what we call bull call spreads. All right. They involve trading more than one option simultaneously. For those of you that are kind of new to it, what we're doing is basically buying a lower, selling a higher spread. All right, same, the same on the same stock, same expiration. All right, but different strikes. And so by doing that, we are able to, as you see there on the screen, what? Lower the overall cost of the trade. Lower the overall risk of the trade. And then finally, lower fluctuation, which creates lower stress. All right. So uh, important to understand that. All right. So. Um, so with spreads, by doing that, how we put that together, and I talked about this just a moment ago, but let's put it into detail. Buying an XYZ 100 call, selling an XYZ 120 call, that's buying the lower, selling the higher. It's going to cost more money for the option you're buying than the option you're selling. Therefore, what you have is a net debit to your account. And so when I see buy the 100, sell the 120, that means what I'm looking at doing is buying the XYZ 100, 120 call spread. I'm buying the call spread and I'm buying it for five points, All right? So this is what it would look like if we were to risk graph this. The five points is the most I can risk on the trade. Five points times 100, which is what you get in the contract is $500. That's $500 risk. At the 100 strike, I have the right to buy XYZ at 100. Now, if we get the, at the 120 strike that I'm selling, I'm obligated to sell XYZ at 120 if someone wants to assign me. And if you put this type of position on and it goes up and you do get assigned, because that's what most people's biggest concerns are, is they might get assigned on, on a short option. You have hit pay dirt, folks. If you get assigned up here, you simply exercise down here and you take the full 20 points between 100 and 120 minus what you paid. So if I paid $5 for the spread and someone assigns me up here and says, you're going to be assigned, I'm going to say, great, exercise my calls because I want to be, I want to own it at 100 and I want to sell it at 120. I would love to do nothing but buy it at 100 and be forced to sell it at 120 all day long because that's the worst feeling that people have in terms of assignment but it becomes the, it becomes the best thing in the world if you do this type of spread. Most likely that's not going to happen. What's going to happen is if you're right and the stock goes up over time, you'll make something in between. All right. So that's your 100, 120 call spread. And let's just talk about, for instances. All right. Um, you got three traders here. They're all bullish on XYZ. Trader A decides to buy 100 shares of stock for $100. That's going to cost Trader A uh, $10,000. That's also Trader A's risk. 
the reward, if we get to 120 and, and trader A sells at 120, so trader A makes $2,000 on his $10,000 investment. That's a 20% return. That's fantastic. Um, I wouldn't uh, be upset about that at all. All right. There, I have a lot of long stock in my portfolio. I'm not, I'm not just an option trader, guys. I mean, you know, I, I, I need to clear the air there just in case. I'm opening up my phone right now and get my face ID. And I'm just going to look at it and I'm going to tell you some of the stocks that I'm long right now so you can get an idea. And, and some of these, I want, I want these long term. Uh, you know, I want these for the long term. Apple, for instance, AbV, um, ABT is on here, BDX. Uh, I'm long Home Depot, Johnson & Johnson, probably not my favorite one to be long, but it's actually doing quite well, believe it or not. Even though they got creamed in the news last week, um, I'm positive on that. Uh, I, I'm long Coca-Cola, Netties, um, I'm long Exxon, and I'm long a lot of ETFs and ETCs. ETCs are exchange-traded commodities. I really just feel like the commodity group as a whole just got absolutely decimated, and so I like the ETCs. You know, I like the ETCs, the grains. I, I really like those. Uh, so I'm saying that because I am trader A in the long term. But when it comes to short term trading, you know, for me, which is maybe 30, 60 days or even much, much less, then I'm either B or C. B is going to buy a call option and maybe trader B buys the XYZ 100 call and pays 10 for it. All right. And so uh, trader B is paying 10. So trader B is, is really paying $1,000 for the call option. Now, if it goes to 120, that $10 call is worth 20, so that's 100% return or $1,000 profit. Trader C, Trader C is a spread trader. 100, 120 call spread buys them for five. Only spends $500, has up to a $1,500 return at 120, which could be a 300% gain. So in all of these instances, if you're a shorter term trader, Trader C makes the, makes the right move because Trader C has less risk, and has a better re return on investment, even though A and B make more gross dollars. C, by having less risk and more reward, has a better return on investment. Now, let's look at the other side of the coin. Let's see if the stock goes from 100 to 50, what happens. Trader A gets uh, dinged for a 50% loss, $5,000. His 10 becomes five. Trader B has a 100% loss because Trader B's $1,000 expires worthless in calls. Well, guess what? Trader C, the 120 call spread, that also expires worthless for $500. So what we have here is how much have you thrown out the door on the trade? Would you rather lose 5,000, 1,000, or 500? I think Trader C is the silver lining when you look at it on a, a dollar by dollar or, or a share by share basis. 100 shares, one contract for 100 shares, one spread for 100 shares. So all things being equal, Trader C was, you know, had the, the silver lining in the losses. So put spreads are just like call spreads in so much that they do have um, limited risk, limited reward. It can be a higher profit potential, but they're used for bearish opportunities where you buy the higher strike and sell the lower strike. And the month of May, we did a few of those, all right? Uh, and did well on them because the month of May was not the most favorite month to be long. All right. But we're going to talk about, uh, for the most part, uh, I'm going to look at, at bullish opportunities with you here uh, for the duration of our time together tonight. And so before I do, I want to, sh I want to show you this. Remember this? This was the, uh, the, the SPY trade we talked about last week. And I said, oh, dark net signal. Oh, it's, good. it's got the bullish, the, the, the buy signal. Um, but wow, look at the end of the, those, those slightly in the money calls were $554. So maybe they're a little too expensive, even though they went up 108%, all right? But I want you to see this. The break even on this trade was 200 and, or, yeah, 283.54. You were buying a 278 call. Now, SPY was actually trading above 278. It was trading for about 280, 281. And, it, and so this week it's at 283.54, right? But, or above 283.54. Look at where it is. I mean, it's gone up quite a bit. Um, it's up from $5.54 to 1146 by 1162. That's a $600 profit or 108% return. But I want you to keep tabs on that, that uh, break even because that didn't change. That's been there since we talked about it last week. The reason I brought that up is because 
look at the spread. So for instance, instead of a call option, you could look at the 281-286 call spread, which was the same expiration dates. And the reason I chose 281-286 is because look at the upside break even. 283-31, it was actually a little bit better. It was a little bit better. Here's the other thing. The spread cost less than half, 231. You're buying uh, the 281 call that you're putting out, that's costing you money. You bring in money for the 286 call. The difference between the two, $231 for the spread. Look at what happened. Uh, this is as of today is uh, up as a profit of $185, an 80% return because look what happened to the options. They went from, well, the, the 281s went from 366 to 873 by 886. And the ones you sold, which were $1.35, were trading 460 by 468. Now, if we went back in time, guys, if I actually had a machine that could take us back in time, I wouldn't buy the spreads. I'd just buy the call options and sell them. But we don't have that luxury, right? So we have to look at what if I'm wrong? That's the most important thing. You know, George Fontenilles, if he taught me anything, I remember those words echoing at every seminar that I was at that he was at. Um, what if I'm wrong? I tried to, I tried to buy that website. What if I'm wrong .com. Couldn't get it. Anyway, I love that. I love that saying. Um, and so again, uh, you know, what if I'm wrong? That's the most important thing. And by knowing that, that allows us to take a five, six, seven hundred, even more expensive trade and bring it down to something that's down to earth. It still gives you the ability to play with the big boys. And this isn't even that big. I want to show you. We'll talk about Amazon in a few minutes and we'll see something that's big. All right. So at this point, let me just check the boards and see some questions and comments, et cetera. Tom was going to tell us about Starbucks this week. OK, so uh, Trey, I'm going to ask you a question now. Now, we were we can look at Starbucks. In fact, let's slide to the right. Um, this is not uh, uh, what's the what's the app? What's the app I'm thinking about where you swipe, white and sw swipe right and swipe left? Uh, I don't remember it, but I'm swiping right and I'm actually going into my tools. And the reason I'm going in there is I'm just going to bring a chart up. Starbucks, um, my son owns it and it's a long term tr uh, trade for him. S-B-U-X. And let's take a look at Starbucks because um, I want to see what happened to it. Look at that beautiful buy signal down there. Dark that down there around set below 76. Look where the trade is today. And you know what? It's getting dots on it. You know what the dots are? Let me bring this up so you guys can see that. You see these dots? These are now stop darts, which means get ready because an exit is coming soon for Starbucks. All right. That's something that I want to, to, to remind you guys of as well. Um, really, really good signals we've been getting this year from darknet i want to say the signals i believe are 80 have been 82 percent accurate on the trades that we have published and that we have shown uh on videos uh and webinars and so that's a that's a great return for for this particular um uh type of strategy especially in the, with the crazy market that we've had for uh, a good bit of the, the year but starbucks there you go trey take a look at that uh good good looking chart uh, if you pick that out, uh, congrats. So, uh, yeah, the, 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 the channel's working very, very well on these guys. Um, uh, and so, um, uh, Charles, you're asking of the option tools part of Darknet. Uh, yeah, and let me just answer that at the end of, the, at the end of uh, today. But, yes, that is part of uh, what, what comes with the Darknet uh, software that you see here. All right. Hey, Liz, great, great to see you. You got here a little bit late. Better late than never. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of am a, an options trader and a stock investor, uh, and, and even private investment with all the, the, my fingers in different, uh, investments around the world. Um, let's see what we got here. If you buy a vertical spread, can you later decide to buy the close and sell the close the two strike prices separately? Yes, you can. Um, I'm not really a big fan of that, Stephen, but I, I will tell you this. Um, I, I have done, okay, so let me show you the one that I recently got into and I, it's, well, recently it was a month ago or so. I don't remember whether it was because of it had a dark net signal. It was Hibbit Sports, H-I-B-B. -B. 
No, it wasn't a darknet signal. Oh, yeah, maybe it was. So, yeah, I did. I got into it here, and then we had this nice little pop. And what happened was um, I had something that went from an option trade to a stock trade to a covered call. Uh, and, and I'm holding that covered call up here now. So I own the stock down here. I got the call up here. The stock has come down, but yet I'm still uh, positive on both the stock and the call is expiring worthless. So I'm actually thinking about rotating that in and, and, and selling it again. So I was... I was automatically exercised on this, hold the stock, and I'm hell bent on continuing to receive premium on this because it's only a $20 stock. That's why I'm hanging on to it. But that's one reason why I would look to maybe uh, sell something separately. The other thing you could do is you could roll up. So let's say that you're into a, um, a bull call spread on let's 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 just throw SPY up there because that's the one I'm thinking about right away. And you're in SPY and it's moving up and all of a sudden now maybe you've got the 280 285s. And all of a sudden this thing's trading up at 288.91. And you're you're looking at your 285s which are now deep in the money. Maybe you might buy those back to close and sell something up here and roll up your strikes. But remember if you roll up it's going to cost you a little bit more money. All right? Your profit potential increases but also your risk potential would increase a little bit as well. But rolling up would be to continue to buy into the long side of the market. It's something a lot of people do. Uh, so great question there. Let's see if I can just pull off any other ones here. Um, I also use George's uh, statement too. That is so cool. That is so cool. Um, thank you very much, guys. Oh, Tinder, Tinder. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> How do all you know that? Um, Gagadeep, can you check Juniper? I'll do Juniper and then we're going to move on. I want to show you guys something new tonight. So JNPR, uh, was that a darknet signal? I don't know. Yes, it was. Look at that. So here's Darknet with Juniper just below 25 and a half. You had to suffer through, look like about one point, and then it's off to the races. But I want you to check this out, Gagadeep. So you've got a dot coming up. So when this thing starts rising, riding up, it starts to crest a little bit. You start seeing these dots. These are stop darts. As long as Juniper continues to ri ride up the curve of Darknet, these dot dots will continue to move up higher too. Once we cross through that, dar that dot, um, then you will see uh, Darknet tell you it's time to get out of the trade. All right. Okay. And that uh, handles the questions for now. And um, let's go ahead and move on to something I want to show you, share with you guys tonight. And this is really like playing with the big boys. So um, from stock to calls to spreads, we talked about it already, but June is really ushering in the seasonal bull. If I were to look at uh, bullish the bullish months of the year, uh, I would say mid-February to about the end of March is seasonally bullish. I would also say sometime in November and in the beginning of December is seasonally bullish. But also one of the best clusters of seasonal bulls has to be the end of June and the first two to three weeks of July. All right. I'm not saying I wish I could tell you that that's going to be true this year. Only time will tell. But I'm a pattern guy. And so I've got to go with what I see that repeats itself time and time again. So we're going to look at that. So we're going to compare buying 100 shares of Amazon versus buying the at the money calls versus buying a call spread. Now, before we do that, let's talk about today's opportunity spotter. And that's the money calendar. So those of you who have heard of the money calendar and maybe a couple of you that haven't, because I see some new optionetic students in the room that I haven't seen in forever. So uh, welcome. So what we're going to talk about and what we talk about here all the time is this three this three pronged attack to the markets. Spot the opportunity, create the lowest trade, plan, execute and manage that trade. And we're going to talk about that with the money calendar. So the money calendar is part of our complete trader software package. All right. And the money calendar is basically our complete trader software package is everything. It's options, it's dark debt, it's money calendar and a lot more. And I'll talk about it later. But the money calendar actually hunts down these simple short term patterns each and every day. And what we do is we look at a minimum of 10 years worth of historical data. In fact, we just uh, recently launched a 20 year calendar. So now we have the 20 year calendar out there for those of you that use our software. If you're a partner, if you're one of our mastery members and you use our software, if you're an annual trader or if you're one of our monthlies that uses complete trader, um, 
I want to show you where you can find that 20 year calendar. So um, I'll do that here in just a moment. So from there, what we do is we look for those trades with reward to risk ratios of at least one to one. And this is to me is so valuable. Uh, this particular tool, like all of our tools is so are so valuable that, you know, we were granted a utility patent for this. Uh, from, we're in the process of it from the US PTO. Now, um, money calendar. This is the monthly view. OK, and what I'm looking at is here's July 11th. Now, July 11th is, is 5446. All right. I actually look at the, the entire month and I try to look for clusters of green or red. Now, we don't really see huge clusters of green until the last week. So really what I'm going to start gearing up is the week of my birthday. My birthday falls on this week. And I, if anything, I've already committed to memory that my birthday is a bullish week. <laughs> In fact, I've been doing that now for almost the last decade. But um, if you see here, you know, we're in an area where um, we're slightly bullish to slightly bearish. Now, Thursday and Friday, it gets, per, it, you know, it gets up there. 78% uh, bulls, 22% bears on, on the 13th. The 14th is 7426. All right. But look down here in the last week. 82% bulls on the 24th, 96% bulls on the 25th, 97, 26, 97, 27, 96, 28. I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty staggering. And it also occurs after the 19th, which is the Fed meeting. And then also, I think uh, we're going to have another summit uh, that may, may occur before the last week of June. So all of this is kind of piling up to whether or not we'll continue to see that. But if history has anything to tell us, I'm definitely going to start lining up uh, some extra cash for this week right here on the bullish side. All right. So that's the monthly view. And then um, I'll show you all those of you all right now that are uh, part of our software package. If you just let me slide to the right and let me go to the money calendar. Here it is. So this is June 2019, just like I showed you. Um, if you go up here, see where it says uh, the money calendar? All right, so I've got a couple of little click downs. A lot of people don't know about this and they just don't watch the videos. So if you click down, you can see the money calendar ETFs. These are just ETFs only. And you can see here the ETFs also start getting really green. All right, the final week of the, of the month of June. And they were a little bearish coming into the end of May. And in fact, they didn't start getting green until the beginning of June, which is where we started seeing a lot of the price action moving higher. That was last week. But one more area you want to go is drop that money calendar title uh, piece down one more time and go to money calendar 20. Now, money calendar 20 is going to be different. And the reason why is because there are much, much less stocks out there that we have 20 years of data on, which is why you see a lot of bearishness coming into uh, the, the last uh, four days of uh, the, the third Friday of June, which is the 21st. But then we start turning green again, 25th, 26th, 27th, 28th, and there's the 4th of July, and that looks pretty green too as we go through the 4th. But um, this is going to be your longer, longer term trades. This is going to be more industrials and less technology, which is doesn't surprise me when I look at the industrials and I look at the financials, but then I look at technology, which has really kind of been leading the pack. All right, so that is uh, where we get that money calendar 20, but I want to show you guys exactly where this all was located. It's in the complete trader, it's under the money calendar section. And then of course, it's under all of these extra patterns that we've been putting up as well. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. So we've got our money calendar monthly view. So I clicked on June 11th earlier today, and then I did uh, a resort by which ones had the best patterns over the last 10 years. Amazon, Google, Google, Netflix, uh, NetEase, Celgene, were all the top bulls. These reds down here, these are bears. LRCX, 14 day bearish opportunity today. Last nine out of the last 10 years, been profitable if you shorted that. URI, same thing. NVIDIA, same thing. 90%, uh, nine in the last 10 years, these three stocks have moved lower during this time frame. When I look at this, it shows me the symbol. It also shows me the number of days in the pattern shows me the net profit over those last 10 years and the accuracy. Google has been running accurate 10 years straight. So has Netflix. So has Celgene, right? So these are some very interesting ones. I'm going to walk you through the Amazon piece, and then maybe we'll do one or two more. How's that sound, guys? All right, so 
let's look at Amazon. So this is, and, and the reason I put it on a presentation form is to make sure I answer all the questions that come up. All right, so when I'm looking at this, I can look at Amazon, the today's date to July 22nd, all right? And then I can look at, uh, again, where's it going? Where's it going? Well, see these? Last year, this thing went over 100, about 120 points. The year before, it was about 80. So we could safely say, that based on the trend, based on the stock price of Amazon and this thing coming into the trend, that conservatively 100 points. So where's it going? Looks like 100 points higher. When's it gonna get there? How long is it gonna take? July 22nd, all right? Now based on that, by the way, July 22nd is like a Monday. If we just back up a couple of days, I think we're right at July 19th. But um, let's take a look. Oh, I put the wrong dates on here. Let me let's go back and let's actually look at this um, with uh, with some real data. So again, step one is going to be uh, on the uh, when we take a look at um, Amazon. We're going to say how long is it going to take to get there, and how much are we talking about? So step two is this. Let's go to a stock. This is the stock chart of Amazon. You can see it already kind of on the move. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna click on option chains. And I wanna go to July. And I'm actually gonna take the third Friday of July, even though the 22nd was the end of the pattern, the 19th, which is only a couple of days from there, uh, that's the third Friday of the month. That's gonna be the most liquid options for Amazon uh, for July. So come on down. And we can see here, 1863. So it doesn't take a math wizard to say, all right, what's 1863 plus 100? 1963. So let's go up to 19. Here's a 1960. Let's sell that. All right, that's our target. You want to be selling near the target. And you want to be buying below, closer to where you are. So the 1950-1960 spread might make the most sense. You guys didn't see that? Let me blow that up for you. All right. Looking at buying the 1950s, if you bought those on their own, first of all, uh, 100 shares of Amazon going to cost you $195,000. One call option with the July 19th, 1950 calls, which are out of the money, by the way, still going to cost you $2,880 plus commissions. However, if we take this 1950 and we sell the 1960 against it, right now we're talking about something that's going to be considerably less. It's not going to be $195,000. It's not going to be $2,880. It's going to be $257. All right. And so you're looking at what? Buying the 1950s, selling the 1960s. Now, the mid price is, two, is again, $257. All right. Um, we might want to go and look at it and, and possibly do a uh, limit on that for, say, three. All right. So that is, uh, that's the way to look at this. And then take a look at the risk graph. So if you look here, you can see the high on Amazon was actually somewhere uh, around that 200, well, 1964 was the high. And that was back on May 3rd. And since then we had the big drop and here we are now. We can get back up, if we get back up to even close to that high, we are in the profit zone for this. So how much profit are we talking about? The maximum profit on this trade is 289%. That's if you get it at 257. If we were to push this, and put it a little bit closer to say $3. So I'll show you how we can do that. Let's force this to $3. So I'm gonna say 2880, 2580. All right, so let's force the trade to up a little bit and let's edit that. And now we see the trade at uh, risk graph, 2580, 2880. Let's go ahead and do a risk graph. Now this, will sh this should show a $300 price now and it does. All right, so $300 price, but now I'm doing that because I want to show you the maximum profit is still 233%. If the risk graph, when you look at it, you can see here, here's your risk and here's your potential reward. All right, over two boxes to one when you look at the risk to reward ratio. Okay, and where does Amazon need to go to get to that maximum reward? Well, it just needs to get right here or above. That is 1950 or above, and you've got your, uh, or sorry, 1960, the short strike or above. And you've got a potential for $700 on $300 of risk, $700 profit. So your 300 could become 1,000, right? So that's the, um, 
That's the trade for Amazon, right? So again, we looked at step one, where's it going? How long is it gonna take? Step two, create the low risk trade, all right? And that's where you go through and look at, with this case, um, taking that high dollar stock and bringing that down to earth. And then finally, the step three, which is plan, execute, and manage. So let's take a look at some other case studies using today's money calendar before I jump over there. Just going to see what's going on. Sandeep, happy birthday to you in advance. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, <laughs> I know it's not pertinent to the day. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Then we have the, exactly, Howard, we're rolling into the three-day holiday trend as well. So um, that's, uh, that's it. Mike, we are including the ETCs uh, when they come up. Those will be in, uh, in uh, Money Calendar as well. Thank you for, the, um, uh, for that uh, information. All right. Um, what if Amazon falls due to a market pullback? Well, guess what? You're not losing $195,000 and you're not losing $2,880. Um, you'd be at the $300 mark. So that's what spreads really help us to do, guys. All right. At the bottom of the screen, it said, what is the percentage of success? And the percentage of success, Thompson, is based on uh, statistical volatility. All right. What we're basing, uh, you know, statistical volatility is uh, if you believe in the random walk theory. And if you do believe in the random walk theory, you'd be better off selling out of the money call spread or put spreads because then you're putting probability on your side. I believe in historical uh, historical rules based trading. And therefore, that's why I go for those two and three to one rewards or better. And so that's a that's a, um, uh, you know, that potential. All right. Um, Total profit is uh, again $700 with actually $300 risk is, is the the point that I was trying to make there. 250 was what it came up with, but that was a mid price, and that's a tough one to really get in there and uh, and do. So um, and then you know Mal, you said why not do a credit spread? And you can do a credit spread. Just realize you're going to be taking in less than you're going to risk. What are you getting for that? Well, you're getting a higher probability of being correct. All right. So let's look at some other case studies, guys. So I'm going to move over to the money calendar. And I'm going to hit July. Why don't we go for the 12th? The 11th is over now. So um, I got the money calendar in front of me. It shows all the green trades, shows all the red trades. There's a bunch of them here. Um, I like the longer term trades. The shorter term ones, you know, you get down to something that shows GME. All right. GameStop, a two day trade. Uh, eBay, a one day trade. I, I don't per se like those. Uh, it, to, to me, if it's short term, I've got to go with, we have a, a little um, thing called the money clock and I go in and I can look at intraday there and try to work on that. But if you're not a, if you're not a short term trader, I, I stick with a lot of the income more, the income stuff. So I go over here and I've got net profit accuracy. I can rank it by accuracy and just look at all the 100 percenters, all the ones that were 10 for 10. Here's JP Morgan. Let's take a look at JP Morgan. So uh, a Potential bullish opportunity between tomorrow and July 23rd. And well, hey, we didn't have any losers in the last 10 years. In fact, the last two years, we actually got up and moved a little bit. But you're really talking about maybe about a four point move. All right. When you factor in the, the curve, which is getting better. All right. Best the best time of the year or the, the best pattern was five and a half bucks. Last year, we actually dropped down and we're losing money before rallying back up and actually going up. Uh, what was that about? Uh, three and a half dollars. But four dollars looks like the, the the average move. So if you were to look at this and say, all right, um, how do I turn this into a trade? Remember, JP Morgan, um, where's it going? About four dollars. When's it going to get there? July 23rd. Go to your option tables. Let's go type in JPM for JP Morgan. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at that July Let's look at the July 19th options again. It's close enough to the pattern, and I really like that third Friday of the month. It's just the most liquid month. 110 calls, $3.33. Stock's trading at 110.68. Now, remember, we would expect this to go up for to about $4. So here's what I'm trying to show you guys. Take a look at this. If we do the risk graph on this, what's the option? What are the options going to be worth if we go up? four dollars and we're at 114. The 110 call is going to be worth four. If you paid three dollars and 33 cents for something that's worth four, you only made 67 cents on the position. Yeah, it's about 20 percent, but you know we're looking for doubles here. So JP Morgan just isn't going to do it. 
back to the money calendar. All right, so we'll go back to the day again, and I'm gonna double click on power meter because power meter, what that does is that gives me the ones that have the best trends in them. Amazon, we looked at already. Let's take a look at Google. So Google is uh, has an opportunity between July or June 12th and July 22nd. That trade, remember, is the only time it lost money was back in 2010. It lost $2.21. All right, but look at what's happened in the last couple of years. Up 38, up 127, up 29, up 26. Last year, up 69. I'm looking at looking at what's happened recently. I'm going to tell you, I think it's around that maybe that 70, 75 point move. When's it going to get there? July 22nd. Let's do some work. So Google. And we'll take a look at it again. I want to look at maybe the night, the 19th options, not the ones that expire in three days. Let's scroll down. Here's the stock price. 1081.04. If I add 70 points to that, that puts us at 1150, all right? Roughly 1150, so that's my target. Let's go down to the target. This is where I wanna be selling. By the way, look at that. Has the most volume and the most open interest. That's what the colors tell me. Let's scroll over and let's sell the July 19th, 1150 calls. They're gonna go for $8.30. Now, I could do this, I could say to myself, I'm not paying more than five bucks for this trade. So. What's 8.30 plus 5? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 30. So I come down and I see, all right, well, I could buy the 11.30s for five. for Now, but if I put the 11.30s and the 11.50s together, that's going to give me a trade that's going to put me in the $500 camp. Let's click risk graph and let's find out. 4.85. Plus, you got a little room for slippage. So we can, we can make that 500. So we could go from eight, we can, let me make that 500 right now. I'm going to just dial this down a little bit. And so that can be my limit. Here's our $500 trade. Here's our risk graph, risking 500 to make potentially 1500. All right, what do we need? What do we need Google to do? Well, we need Google to be at above 1150 by July 19th. What did Google do today? Google. I got all kinds of stuff on my screen. I got another multiple screen thing over here. Uh, well, Google's at 1081. It was down a dollar 72 today. It was at 1103. So it had a 20 point move today. It just went up and down. But I mean, you know, you could see that this thing could be at 1150 within a couple of days, the way it rolls. And of course, the all time high back there at the end of April, we were close to 1300. So can it happen? Yeah, it can. And money calendar is predicting that that based on history that it has a very good chance of happening. All right. So once again, I'm going to roll this up for you so you can see it. What are we doing? Well, we're long the 1130 calls, July 19, 1130s and short to July 19, 1150s. All right. So that is our uh, trade for Google. Let's do one more. All right. Back to money calendar. Back to today. Um, let's see. So we had the power meter and uh, I just want to double click it to make sure I'm in the right area. Oh, uh, let's see. Netflix. All right. Netflix. Another big, big winner that just keeps going higher. Look what happened two years ago. Twenty nine dollars and twenty two cents. Last year, fifteen eighty eight. Uh, th four years ago, nineteen eighty five. This really looks like about a twenty dollar move. And so when's it going to get there? July 16th. What do we do? Well, we go back to our option graphs, and I'm actually going to go up here to the top, and I'm going to type in NFLX. Pardon me moving around so fast. Um, I, I want to make sure that I had this set up where we could all see it. All right, here's Netflix. Again, July 19th options are what I am interested in. I'm also interested in anything 20 points above where we are right now. So we roll down $351.27. What's 20? That puts us in the 370 area. Let's stick with 370. So if I come over to the 370 calls, again, where are we going? 370, that's what I'm going to sell. All right. Um, how about the 360s? Let's look at buying the 360s. That's 10 points lower. Does that put us in an area where we could put a trade on for less than $500? And the answer is yes, $430. And you got a little room just in case. 
but there's your trade. All right. Here's the actual trade itself. Um, buying the 360 calls, selling the 370 calls for July 19th, doing that for uh, the below $500. Your risk graph shows you the worst you can do if this thing falls out of bed is what you paid for the option. The option spread can be the stop. All right. But then look over here. You've got a much better reward to risk ratio as you can make up to $570 on this trade. Uh, if you hang on to it all the way into expiration and it's above the short strike, that's 132%. All right. So what did we do here for you? Well, we talked about uh, quit putting spreads on the lower cost, lower risk, lower stress. That's exactly what you do with stocks like Amazon, Google, and Netflix. All right. Um, why did we do this? Because we thought they were going up? No. Anytime I think something is going up, if I did the opposite, I'd do real well. No, I'm a rules-based trader. I look at what a rules-based objective trading system tells me to do, and I do it. And that's what we do here. Okay. Now, um, next week. Oh, yeah. Let me get into next week in just a moment. So I wanted to make sure all of you were aware of this, that um, we do have a free trial still available. Right. This is going to be coming down pretty soon. Uh, and, and I'm not just saying that to say it. It's, I'm saying it because it's going to happen. Um, we have three different levels or level four is our membership full on it. But we do have three different levels. This is um, the option trader level one the, uh, and that's all of our option tools videos support uh, and we have uh, tons and tons of um, of uh, training videos that come with this too our level two is our option trader plus dark net our level three is option trader plus dark net plus the money calendar right and so these are uh, all all happening um, we do have apps that um, we are going to be releasing real soon. I'll talk, tell you about those next week, but they're apps that you can use on both an iPhone, an iPad, an Android device, uh, whether that's an Android phone or an Android pad, if that's what they call them. Um, and those are just super slick, guys, super slick. So um, that is uh, it. Uh, let me just check and see. I want to I give you guys a little bit of homework, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you loose here. Uh, as we are winding up the hour, all right? Um, and so uh, thank you all for the questions. There are so many of them here. Um, <laughs> I wish I could answer them all, guys. I apologize. But um, uh, take a look again at those uh, those uh, stocks or those, excuse me, those uh, options. We're going to review next week. We're going to review week one, and we're going to look at the case studies, the Campbell Soups and the APCs, uh and the others um we're also going to look at the case studies we talked about this week and next week i'm going to do something with you we're going to take george's 1030 trading strategy and i'm going to show you how to go from george's 1030 trading strategy to my triple threat trader all right i'm also going to be talking about my once a year program this may be the last this is the fifth year i've done this it might be the last year i do it uh this uh, system and trading mastery program that i'm going to be doing and I am going to also talk about the $200,000 cryptocurrency giveaway that I'm going to be giving away next week. And so uh, I'm going to talk about that, too. So you definitely want to show up for that. Um, we'll talk a little bit about cryptocurrency, but I really want to get into George's strategy and how we turn that into a trading system and improve upon it. Because he had something good. He had something good, and we figured out how to make it better through back testing. Uh, and through forward testing, and I'm going to share all that with you guys. So um, that's it. Thank you very much for joining me tonight, um, and I will get the the, the uh, recording out to you as soon as I can, and I look forward to seeing you guys next Tuesday, all right? We'll see you next Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Till then, take care. Have a good week. Bye now.